Okay, this is a Rotel A14 Mark II. It's a modern, all singing, all dancing amp that does streaming, Bluetooth, network. Um, it's also got phono input and the standard sort of CD player inputs. Now, the problem with this one was it was brought back from the States where the mains voltage is 110 volts, uh, and then plugged into the UK voltage, UK passed by, which promptly killed it. Although it wasn't totally dead, the display on the front was still working. But it was, uh, it didn't work as an amplifier. So there's a, there's a lot in this amplifier. You've got this big board on the top, which is the processor board. So you've got, um, there's an ARM processor there. We've got um, we've sort of got a we've got a, a USB connector, a network connector, an RS232 connector. This I'm not entirely sure what this board does. There's there's absolutely no circuit diagrams for this anywhere on the net, which doesn't help. We've got a load of op amps over here, and so this is this is the microprocessor board, which is a good quality fiberglass board and this this particular board uh, appear to all be working because this drives the display but then underneath it we've got the main amplifier so this is the this PCB here drives the uh, power transistors and then we've got a pair of these two of the speaker relays this is a protection relay that isolates the output of the transformer goes through these fuses, go, then goes through this relay and then goes into that. So that's like a protection relay. We've got, there's another circuit board underneath here, which has got look, what looks like a couple of either regulators or transistors on it that are on a heatsink. This is the phono stage amplifier, I'm guessing. This, uh, this cable here, this is the audio off of the bottom board that comes up through a slot comes up through a slot there on this on this top board uh, and then we've got this great big heatsink bolted in the middle with a whole load of power transistors and other transistors bolted on top of the bolted on top of the transistors These are my labels. I've put um, one of the things I do when I'm testing an amp. So I've put this uh, thing here about fuses. There's there's a couple of like 6.3 amp fuses there. So I actually replaced them with two amp fuses while I was repairing it, just in case anything nasty happens. The fuse will go. So then we've got a uh, sort of power supply over here, which is the standby circuitry. So. Big problem with this amp is this board, this top board is easy enough to get to, but that was all working perfectly all right. And all the there's lots of little voltage regulators on it that say what the voltage is on the circuit board, so that and they were all correct exactly as they should be. But the problem was there was absolutely no voltage on the main amplifier board. And now this is where it starts getting complicated with this board because you can't get the the board underneath this top board is absolutely huge. And it's almost impossible to get out. The only way to get it out would be to just would be to you can't it would be to remove the transformer, but the transformer wind the wires from the transformer are wrapped around these posts and solders, so you'd have to you wouldn't be able to desolder that, you'd have to snip the wires off. Because the other problem with it is You've got this great big heat sink in it, which is heavy, and the circuit board. I've tried taking it out, and it it looks like it will snap in half really easily. On the basis that what I discovered ultimately, there was there's absolutely no there's no power supply on this main bridge rectifier, but there was power on these fuses. So I managed to sort of lift 
part of the board open by using a mirror that I poked underneath the circuit board. I could see where this, how this arrangement was all joined together. And basically, the fuse wasn't switch, the, uh, the relay there. But this this relay wasn't switching on, so there was no power getting into this rectifier, which powered all this main amp. And it was down to a failed transistor over in the over here somewhere. So fixing the transistor brought it back to life. I'm probably going to end up rewiring it for the UK main supply. So because at the moment it's now running off a 110 volt power supply adapter, but it'd be better to run it off, rewire it because the actual transformer it does actually say on the circuit board which transformer colours go on which of the which of these pins down here to make it run on uh, different voltages along with this jumper link here needs to be moved so I'm probably going to change that jump that across and rewire it so I've put this Rotel all back together again which wasn't a five minute job there's loads of screws some and they're not all the same they look the same size but they're not there's a slight some are ever so slightly bigger so we're still running off 110 volt supply Power on relay clicks Get a Rotel message and I'm, and we're getting a one kilohertz sine wave coming from my test generator. What's interesting with this is because it's a digital volume control, as you turn the volume up and down, you can see it jumping, jumping in steps. And every time it jumps, it makes a bit of a click on the speaker. So if you do that, turn the volume up and down rapidly, you get a kind of fast clicking. You don't notice it when it's playing music. So after testing all the other inputs work and concluding that the amp is now working as well as it ever was, um, this concludes the video. I hope you found it useful and please subscribe to my channel for more videos. Thank you.